Hi, I'm Oliver, co-founder of Genspace, and welcome to DNA Cocktail Hour. Today we're going to be making a strawberry DNA cocktail. Here's a list of equipment you will need. Here's a list of ingredients. So the first thing we will use is some frozen strawberries that have been thawed out. We'll grab about three whole strawberries and put them in their own Ziploc bag. Strawberry cells have cell walls made of cellulose. When things freeze, ice crystals form. And when ice crystals form, they shred the cells. And when you thaw them out, everything basically turns into a mush. The next ingredient we're going to add is a little pineapple juice. We'll pour about a cup into the Ziploc bag. Seal this bag up. And now comes the fun part. You get to smush the strawberries. The more you break them up, the higher the yield of DNA. One reason we pick strawberries is that they have lots of DNA. Commercial strawberries have 56 chromosomes. There are seven different types of chromosomes, but eight copies of each type. An organism that has eight copies of each chromosome is called octoploid. Polyploidy, having more than two copies of each chromosome, is fairly common in plants. An apple has three copies of each chromosome. A banana also has three copies. Wheat has six. A cabbage has five. Humans are diploid, which means that there are two copies of each chromosome in the nucleus of our cells. After we have smashed everything up, we're going to filter out all the pulp. The pineapple juice contains an enzyme called bromelain. Bromelain breaks down the chromosomes, setting the DNA free to float in the mixture in the Ziploc bag. Now you want to fill up the shot glass to the halfway mark. The DNA follows the water through the sieve because both DNA and water molecules are charged. The building blocks of DNA are negatively charged. Like little magnets, they attract the positive ions and water molecules around them. This causes the DNA to remain in solution. So the next key ingredient that we're going to use is very high proof alcohol. This is Bacardi 151. Any kind of alcohol that is 70% or higher works really well for DNA extraction. We're going to gently pour the alcohol down the side of the shot glass, agitating the surface a little bit while pouring so that the DNA will be kicked out into the alcohol solution. As I'm doing this, you'll see two layers are forming. Alcohol is less dense than the aqueous layer, so it is floating on top. In between these two layers, you can start to see that there is this fuzzy material forming. This is the chromosomal DNA coming out of solution. Alcohol is weakly polar, so when DNA hits the alcohol, the only thing that the DNA can cling to is itself. This causes it to clump out of solution and to become visible. You can see it as a cottony mass forming. If you let it sit for a bit, the DNA will start to lift off because there are these little air bubbles that are stuck to its surface that will cause it to rise to the top. You can then pick the DNA up with a toothpick or wooden skewer. DNA is a very long stringy molecule. It is like an old analog tape that is essentially all the information encoded in a linear manner. Now what can we do with this DNA? We can take it to a lab, amplify it, and sequence it. We can also eat this DNA, although it is soaked in Bacardi 151, which gives it a very strong alcohol flavor. At Genspace, we usually throw some of these shots into a blender, add more juice, ice some coconut cream, and make a smoothie out of it. Feel free to experiment with your own recipes. This is how you make a DNA cocktail.